Let, let's talk about some equally cheery uh, news, uh, some some auteurs within the games industry. Oh, fuck me. Yeah, let's just get right into it. Let's, let's, let's get over it. Uh, David Cage, better known as his role as the president of Quantic Dream and director of games such as Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, and Detroit Become Human, has found himself yet again in the hot seat. Uh, criticisms on the overall quality of his games aside, Cage has been the subject of multiple investigations that alleged Cage perpetuated a harmful studio culture by encouraging sexism, racism, sharing controversial images such as photoshopping employees as Nazis and porn stars, uh, enforcing 15 to 35 additional work hours a year out from the game's release schedules. Uh, Cage responded to the allegations as, quote, ridiculous, absurd, and grotesque. As part of the ongoing trials involving former employees, David Cage in tears exclaimed, you are interfering in my business. This case is about my honor. And uh, I won't say the word that he said, but uh, in the open space, there is a lack of tits. At Quantic Dream, we don't make games for, insert, uh, homophobic slur. Um, the case thus far has shown illegal employee dismissals that were, co- that were all copy-pasted with only the employees' names changed. Um, other notable instances of Cage being a horrible person include violating Elliot Page's no nudity clause by putting his face onto a naked model, and harassing games journalists such as IGN's Lucy O'Brien for giving his games low review scores, uh, going so far as to, to pull her aside at public conventions oh and, to my cha- God. and to chastise her for um, being too harsh onto developers and to think about the families at, at Quantic Dream. He's, imagine uh, imagine pulling a reviewer a, see it's like and here's the thing it's like i've seen reviews by people i'm not calling out anybody like i've seen reviews by people that make me just as a consumer go like that feels like not good like it feels like either you did something dirty or you didn't give this a fair thing or whatever but like i still the the hubris of someone like david cage who was literally who was just known more than anything else for being a complete fuckhead like regardless of this new stuff that came out, like it just everyone already assumed he was a piece of shit pretty much mm-hmm. because of all the content in his games and the how much of like he obsesses over being like an auteur. But then like to for him to just walk up to someone at a at a convention and be like, Yo, I don't like how you gave my my game a bad review. It's it's the <laughs> worst possible thing you can do as a creative. It's like take the criticism and just like improve upon it. Instead he's like just no yeah. that we don't he he's like literally the fucking um What's the shitty director? U- UA Ball? Bull? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a whole other fucking. Literally, literally challenges his <laughs> critics to f- boxing matches, and they and if they lose, they have to recant their criticisms, and if they win, and no matter, and like the money goes to charity or whatever. You know, at, at least he's he's willing to square up. Uh, Cage, on the other hand, is just. Uh... Oh no, Cage is a big pussy. Yeah. Like. When when I hear oh he lit, ran out of the courtroom st- in tears, all I can think of is like oh yeah you you were like hot shit when you won your first case against like the people who like alleged what they alleged, mm-hmm. and now you're just like oh no oh my honor my honor. Also, I hope whoever's I hope whoever um because uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I know like the original case was not thrown out. It was they were um uh they lost the case, and I'm hoping that it was. O- open to appeal i don't know if it was or not because if it but if it was open to appeal this is definitely gonna help their case right with it's, everything else that came out mm-hmm. it, it's it's just a whole mess on so many fronts like yeah on, so stupid. like I, like obviously i feel like some of the other devs there that are hopefully not other uh pieces of shit um who who could have thought that who could have thought that the developers of games including such <laughs> scenes as Madison Page gets molested, implied to be molested, dream molested, um, almost murder molested. Her entire existence in that game is just nonstop. Either I'm a sex toy for Ethan, I'm seducing Ethan, I'm misleading Ethan, or I'm getting assaulted in multiple mm-hmm. ways. Who would have thought that the guy who wrote that character ended up being like a misogynist pig? I'm, I can't believe it. Who, 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 believe, who, would have, who would have known that man who authored such amazing characters as angry black man with sloped forehead and low cut jaw from heavy rain or or omnipotent secret sp- a scary homeless man from indigo prophecy or giant <laughs> aggressive scary mayan man from indigo prophecy could, would be would be a bad person 
<laughs> yeah, it's it, it's it's pretty bad, even just like within the context of the game. So then he toss in the stupid shit of him photoshopping employees into like really stupid ass uh-huh. shit, like like just straight up harassment. This this dude is a clown on like every conceivable front possible. And um, I- I'll put it this way: his heavy rain in particular came at a specific point within the games industry where no other i don't want to say no other games no other games were doing it like at that much of a i don't know if it was considered triple a but but at at a big production level no one was making like big narrative games and i i I still want to maybe even attribute like some of the shift in the industry to like making more more of a focus on narrative games you you can attribute a, a decent amount of that to heavy rains um pushed by sony and whether and, and success in terms of like at least in financials, not in all the really bad writing in there. You can um, contri- you can attribute a little bit of that to Indigo Prophecy or Fahrenheit as well, because while mm-hmm. that game is not, I want to say while that game may not be as well known or as like you know people still defend it, at least not to the same degree. Like there were things that were man, that's the fucking wildest thing about David Cage games is that. Every single one of them in some way actually has either in its premise or in like some other basic idea or basic plot, like an actually pretty compelling idea or pretty cool idea. But every single time it either it is just run into the ground before it even gets off the ground. Like Mm -hmm. it's crazy. Do you remember an Indigo prophecy where because what it starts off is like this murder mystery thing with like some mysticism or whatever and then by the end it's literally the matrix with the the main character flying through the sky and like i don't remember there's aliens or whatever it just evolves like into pure fucking stupidity there's not aliens there well hold on hold on everybody um (laughs) okay 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 because i've spent way too much time on that game back in the day so you start off with Oh, this is your main character. But oh, your main character is possessed and murdering someone. And then he wakes up and doesn't know what he did. And you have to like cover up the murder scene and run out of there. And then you control the cops investigating the murder scene. And it's like, oh, wow, this is pretty compelling. The more you get into the game, it stays pretty interesting. Aside from, you know, things in retrospect, like you know, women characters, except for like, like there's one compelling female character in that entire game. But she also still ends up becoming like, another waifu by the end anyway yeah and just the, loses all of carla or whatever fuck her name is I, I believe you're right on that but like but like, yeah women can only exist in, in cage's games purely for the purpose of eventually sleeping with the protagonist yeah and like and you your, your progression of that story is compelling interesting and weird and mysticism implied and it just and it's and it like jumps the shark up until where up until like your main character gets killed but he's still walking around but he's like a cold corpse, but he's still ambulatory. And then, and then you find out that there's a weird Mayan, like old, there's like an ancient Mayan cult. I want to say that, or religious that game, group that game that, goes places that is using him. I'm not, I'm not finished. We, we're having tangents. I'm explaining the fuck. I'm giving the, the long and short of Indigo prophecy story. Um, the more you find out, like uh, you have to find the Indigo child who is this like, reincarnation or destined thing of like supposed to speak he's, this child is supposed to whisper the like an- the question or answer to the universe or something into a select person and then when you're supposed to give when you're supposed to hand over okay sorry i'm getting ahead of myself it's, it's... <laughs> um you meet you meet an old woman named agatha who's blind but a psychic because you know that makes sense and she's in a wheelchair because that makes sense and that's how tropes work um, she gets killed while you're in, while you're like either in the house with her or like after she calls to calls you over. Cause she's killed by the giant scary mind man that I it mentioned earlier that also, um, is the one who framed, who was like controlling you when you killed someone, uh, and doing like a sacrificial murder. Um, you, you, you have to escape from her place once, once she's dead, but later she's still somehow still alive. And you think, Oh, she's just like haunted spirit, whatever, like psychic woman. But you instead find out she's actually an AI construct that has fuck? been taking on the form of a woman who wants the indigo child because the United States shadow government wants the indigo child and the answer question, whatever. And, um, Mayan man also wants the question for his, like, they have a name. I forget. Um, and Ethan doesn't know who to, Ethan does not know who, um, to not Ethan. 
I don't know what his name is. Luke. Luke doesn't know um, what the main character doesn't know what to do. And also almost gets his brother killed, but you can get his brother killed, but the game continues if you do. Um, meanwhile, the cops are investigating the crime the whole time and go to catch you, but then go to like your apartment. I'm, I'm sounding like a rambling crazy person to everyone listening, <laughs> but I am doing as good a job as I can to explain this narrative because the narrative itself is very jumbled and confusing. From what I remember, you're doing a very accurate job. It's just that there's a lot of bullshit in it. We haven't gotten to the weird Silence of the Lambs parody reference, but you also, but that is also one of the most ableist represent. It's somehow more ableist than like the representations in the game they out first outlast game, which is an achievement, <laughs> if I do say so myself. Um, like you have to, you have to, you have to escape a, a, a criminally a criminal insane asylum as like cartoonish characters of crazy people walk around halls and scare the shit out of you like a haunted house <laughs> um yeah. you, you 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 flash back in time to your childhood and like it's implied that i don't know if it's implied that you alter t alter things or yeah no i think it is actually implied that you are altering things and you're flashing back in your memory and shit like second sight a way better game that i never beat um god that's sad i've beaten indigo prophecy and i've never beaten second sight a game that it ripped off um what am i missing um oh and the world is going into like an apocalypse scenario where the world is like snowing over oh hey max Payne, that was another game that did that that was way better even though it's still also not the best aged game <laughs> and then <laughs> and then you get to you have to go to like I forget where, like Alaska, the North Pole, somewhere. You have to go somewhere where it's like a government base and bring the indigo child there to, like, see everything. But then government agents all show up along with the crazy AI construct who just looks like an, a big energy skeleton. Um, the homeless man that you was like a creepy homeless man watching everything in the beginning of the game turns out to be part of a secret network of underground homeless surveillance people that's like an underground secret society. Um, they help, they help eat the main character. I keep wanting to say Ethan because all of David Cage's main characters are the same fucking person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 he, he helps save you and Carla or whatever her name is. I don't know if her name was Carla. I hope it's Carla. I'm I'm pretty sure it is. And you can have sex with her even if you tried to rekindle your relationship with your ex because your ex dies in one way or the other in a scene. Um God. Yeah, God, yeah, this game it, sucks. It, it's so bad. I mean even to go to I guess to fast forward it every if like the uh, the Elliot Page stuff pissed me off really bad oh. back in the day, especially since he has that specific clause like, hey, I don't do nudity in movies. You can have me in scenes, or whatever, but you cannot have nudity. And so like hey, so, that yeah. entire game is like his his face scan. Everything about that game is him. Um, but he never did like a scan for a nude model. So they went out of their way to take his face scan and just attach it to like a generic nude model. Because and I was under the impression that it was that he did full body scans, but his clause was like, you can't use my full new body. You're going to have to, and the agreement was, you're going to, like, you know, not actually have my, like, nipples and crotch and whatnot be there, and that's why they're obviously obscured for this other, although also because they don't want an AO rating at that point in time. But then it was found out later via someone, like, going into the ROM of the game, like, oh yeah, no, like, Elliot Page's nude body is absolutely just fully scanned in here, and then he ended up suing David Cage and winning on that. Or no, I don't know if he won. I know he sued him. Yeah, I don't know what the result was, but um, yeah, just total fucking creepy thing that didn't need to exist in there whatsoever. It's on like, top of having, oh, can we talk about his creepy notebook of just like pictures of Elliot from like ages what, like eight to oh, thirty or yeah. something? It it was bad. Uh. <laughs> It, it, like like even so, so so they know that Elliot had had that clause in there where I I don't do nudity. Um, I'm sorry. I just for the people listening who maybe don't know about this creepy notebook, I need to emphasize the fact this is a notebook that David Cage put together and was part of what he used to pitch the idea to Elliot. This is not like oh he had Elliot involved in the project and then collected images to be like so this is how we're going to design the character for every stage of their life. No no no. 
No, 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 no. He put together a fucking notebook of Elliot Page without his consent before meeting him. Yep. Like... That, that's some stalker creepy ass shit right there. Go on, Jose, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's so bad. But, uh... So, so yeah, they, they were aware of this clause, so they knew that re- they were not going to have a scene depicted for the for the retail copy, or whatever, where we're going to see Elliot Page nude. Um, so, so like, even if they were to to put um his face on a nude model, there was no reason whatsoever you had to had it that detailed with the crotch, with with the with the uh, nipples and everything. Like, it, this was just pure one hundred percent fucking creep status. It's there's no uh there's no way around that it, it's all bad on every front it's either laziness and not wanting to like i guess edit the model after you did a full body scan i don't know how mocap scans work so i'm not going to pretend like i know but it's either that or it's like it's just oh it, it's just like you intentionally left it in there because you wanted to be a horny weirdo which i would equally believe mm-hmm. and do, do we even really need to get into like how horrible uh, that allegory is in uh, in Detroit and where he's downplayed just like yeah this isn't like tied to anything based in reality and whatnot. when they literally have robots going to the fucking back of the bus <laughs> same thing you see the robots all get on the back <laughs> of the bus and it just says like android air like holy fucking it's shit it's so bad <laughs> fucking fucking you you get Jesse Williams to be the fucking Marcus, your revolutionary character, and like, right, like I to this day, I honestly think that Jesse Williams was lied to about like the extents of his character and what you could do because like on paper it makes sense that you want to have if you want to have branching paths through a thing you want to show like the nonviolent resistance and violent resistance and in a in a an actual writer would show that as an actual good writer would show that as neither one of these is like, we're not doing a right and wrong. We're showing these are different ways to achieve a revolution and both have their place in different quantities. But I watched and played, I played a little bit of Detroit. I'm probably going to beat it just so I can experience all the nastiness and like talk more about how shitty it is. Not like hate it, hate play it, but like act act accurately criticize it. Mm -hmm. Not that you need to experience all of something to accurately criticize it, but I digress. Like, it just comes off as like, oh, the the peaceful way is the right way, and the violent way is the bad way. Because you have that character who her whole thing is like, it's a, I forget, like, you can learn that she used to be like a sex robot, and that's why she's so violent. But like, you can kind of, inc- you can encourage her to not be as violent, and it's just like... Mm. And yet another, uh, yet another female character that is ultimately turned into a sex object, literally for another <laughs> male character. Yeah. Can we talk about the lesbian sex robots that either only exist only to die, or, like, I guess you can let them go, but it's still so hackneyed, like, queer, not queer panic, um, I like, queer remember that tragedy. Part, to be honest. Oh, um, when you're playing as Connor in the sex robot, uh, area, and, uh, you can, you're chasing down the one that killed John or whatever. God. Oh my god, David I, I, Cage, I'll, you I'll, can't, I'll, like... There's I'll so be, many rape scenes and attempted rape scenes in his games, it fucks me up. Oh. I'll be honest, from just even like a pure game perspective, these are like guilty pleasures of mine where I just like that format of like a narrative experience. But there are like so, so many issues just yeah. strewn throughout all of them. It's it, it's bad. <laughs> Oh my uh, god! Oh my you, god! You know the you know the stupidest fucking part of this, and I don't I don't give a fuck about about Snake Boy. I'll call him by name. Fucking uh, Colin Moriarty was when this game came out. He's like, this is like the best written thing on the planet. I'm just like, you stupid motherfucker. Remember, remember, <laughs> like, remember when you uh, when you let let the fucking evil well, not the evil robots when you let the deformed robots out of that one shithead's basement. And the literally, like the first thing he says is just like, "You're the real monster. Who's the real monster?" And it's just like, <laughs> "My God, it's, my God!" You you know someone is fucking stupid as shit when they deny systemic racism, and then they look at and then they look at Detroit and they're just like, "Wow, this is like the best written thing on the planet. Look at the peril that these robots went through." 
It's a good. But, but Jose, no, there's a good thing. There's no allegorical equivalent of this based in reality. <laughs> but Jose, there isn't any allegorical equivalent because there's no politics in Detroit um, beyond human. It, it, beyond, I beyond human. Um, okay, okay. Sidebar. For the longest time, I was convinced. I like Mandela affected myself to thinking that Beyond Two Souls, and it was it was Beyond Two Souls and Detroit Beyond Human. <laughs> which would have been a way better like catchy stupid thing that would have been like hey that's dumb but i respect it but instead it's like no it's detroit become human which is also stupid but not as like catchy as oh that was the same word in the other thing i i, I guess to close this out i think whoever made that decision to fucking dump whatever exclusivity deal they had with um whoever at sony had the idea to dump whatever exclusivity they deal they had with quantic dream they are fucking sighing a huge breath of relief just like damn we avoided so much <laughs> fucking backlash shit with like all the recent shit coming out because what literally they, they... that picture of spongebob just because <laughs> what they, they published um heavy rain beyond and detroit but like they were so eager after detroit to just be like yeah no we're gonna distance ourselves you, you can have your game back you can put it on um i don't know if it's on xbox i know it's on pc now all all three of those yeah hey y'all don't pay for those games is it detroit, exists. Is, isn't detroit even on um the ps plus collection or something I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know how I the financials know. of that specifically. It was on the PS down, Plus but. at some point. I don't know if it's on the PS Plus collection that you get for being on PS Plus and having PS Five. Right. Man, fuck David Cage. I hate him so much. <laughs> and uh, like, uh, so many people tried to warn everyone. Like, as a dumb high schooler, I enjoyed his games because I was like, oh, there's good and the bad and blah, blah, blah. And then as an adult looking back, it's once you learn more about him and the patterns, it's like, no, 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 they were always shit. They're still yeah. like, they're like so bad it's good schlock games, but that doesn't mean, mean they get a pass. That just means that I can understand why you would have fun with those and I could even still have fun with those despite how terrible they are. Mm -hmm. like, like even from the perspective, I haven't played Heavy Rain and since like... Fuck, I want to say like 2014 or something like that. But like, I remember like at least from a game point of view, I enjoyed my time with it. I'm fairly confident if I go back and revisit it, I'm going to have a significantly worse time just because there's so much stupid shit. That I'll make it worse for you right now. Pick up on. Did you ever learn about the what? How that one thing about Ethan like blacking out and everything? Well, that's a plot hole in the final game that actually did have like a, a justification, and they just never mm -hmm. implemented it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, to, to everyone listening, the main character in, in Heavy Rain, I'm going to spoil it, I don't fucking care, I don't pay for his games, um, you find out that one of the player characters is the killer, and um, uh, by Ramen Nomad, you have a good rest of your night. Um, uh, 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 you play as the killer as one of the characters, and like, in a kind of genuinely good twist until you think about it and realize now there was a lot of contrived shit too. But I, then, like, you have to also... Con but then you, then you find out afterwards that apparently Ethan and him had a psychic link and that's why Ethan was blacking out wait, and what? Like, ending... Did you not know this? Because okay, I thought I, you just I, said you knew this. I, I didn't know that part. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason Ethan blacks out all the time is because he has a psychic link with Shelby and that's why he ends wow. up like in that intersection where, like, I guess Shelby's warehouse was or whatever. Yeah, you were gonna have like nightmare sequences where you were gonna see like dead children floating in the water and shit as Ethan. I mean, okay, for for the record, I'm also repeating hearsay, but like this is at this point, I, I would be more surprised if something like that wasn't true. I before we move on, I I just want to say like that 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 uh, plot contrivance you were uh, pointing out where they they kind of put they don't even just straight up lights. No, okay, I'll, I'll just say it. When the And it turns out when you're playing a Shelby and you go into the room that you were just in with another character, it turns out they're suddenly dead. You're like, who the fuck could have done that? They straight up lie to you. They omit him going into the room and, like, personally killing the dude. It's, it, it, it's, it's such awful writing. Like, if you have to outright lie like that, it, it's, I, it's garbage. I'm, I'm not a fan of that at yeah. all. Yeah. 
like I remember I do remember them just like pulling out to like a like an established like another establishing shot and then going back and it's like man what's taking him so long but like it's that's barely a justification if um, and like, if, I, if I'm even remembering it right. Usually that would work, but I recall like the last time I played through it, I like specifically kept an eye out for that. And from what I recall, you are consistently in control. Like there's no camera cuts or anything. Oh my I, God. I, yeah, that I could sucks. be wrong. I would have to replay it. I could also um, just be thinking of how Detroit did that exact thing of like a bunch of establishing shots when you switch between characters and shit. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I didn't even get to the Android concentration camp in the ovens. Oh god. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. Yeah, co-opting the Holocaust. <laughs> that's great. And the giant and the giant black the giant like quiet soft spoken black man stereotype character robot. He can sacrifice himself to try and save you. <laughs> it's it's so bad. Game of the uh, year. Oh, we god. we could have a podcast dedicated to David Cage games. Like, like will not, at not, some point, not, probably. Not, like, not a whole episode. Like we can make a podcast series. Fucking like a limited series. De- deconstructing the entirety of David Cage's games. Oh my god. Anyway, yeah. what's what are we going to next? I'm scared. <laughs> Let's see. Do, do you um Yeah, you never played the first Horizon Zero, or I guess the first Horizon <laughs> no. game, right? I've never or, played Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> All right, we we can save that for next time. But yeah, it's I'll, not I'll, like I'll, it's not like I'm opposed to playing it. I just yeah, like it's not going to be. You're basically just going to be talking, and I'm going to be going. Oh, that sounds cool, or oh, that yeah. sounds dumb. Basically, yeah. Um, for what it's worth, stuff in there did look pretty cool. Um, oh, looks like that. a neat game. First game I'll was really good. Had some me- probably minor presentation issues closer to launch. Uh, characters are a bit too. Uh, Fallout or Bioware, where they're kind of like dead staring you, and you're like in one-on-one conversations. Maybe some kind of like jilted or canned um, animations, where they're just kind of pulling through. So it's like you'll see characters talking, and they do like the same um, hand gestures over and over and over. We've seen a million times, just stuff like that. But overall, very solid game. Can't wait. Shit for like the that doesn't really one. affect me because I'm I'm so used to the eras of like the talking heads from like the classic Fallout games fallout 3 fallout new vegas like I, I, that shit does not phase me it's just mm-hmm. it's burned into my brain as normal at this point it's also one of those games where i think it would just be infinitely better if they didn't have an inventory capacity or if there wasn't as much shit to grab oh like, yeah that's if, if there's if there was less stuff there was more impactful i'm always in favor of that versus like is it a weight system just, or is it like slots slots okay uh, that's uh, uh, that's better but that's still not great yeah Unless it's a game like um, like the original Resident Evil games where you have limited, limited inventory, but it, it's so central to like that core gameplay yeah. loop. Um, or if, like if that... um, Pathologic 2 like, is one of the few games that I'll be like, all the choices to make that game design bad are good because the whole point of the game is to be like a depression simulator. Yeah, if it's part of the central design, it totally makes sense. But if it's mm-hmm. if it's like an act of annoyance, just don't fucking bother exactly like like the first thing i do when if i'm playing skyrim on pc i'll just type in whatever console command to just like give me unlimited weight because i i cannot be bothered um after every little minor dungeon to freaking fast travel back to white run go to fucking what's what's the dude's name bellathor hear hear about how he would sell his sister uh sell him all my iron daggers oh yeah while she's standing there yeah <laughs> bellathor is a piece of shit but is he is he as bad of a piece of shit as uh, what's the dude's name Nazim talking shit about the cloud district? I don't even How you'll remember. never go there. I barely played Skyrim honestly. I played oh, a lot shit. more Oblivion than I played Skyrim. See, I I only played like the opening of Oblivion because my friend back in the day, he he was telling me about how uh, how Archie was so broken in it. Uh, you can just like you can just do Archer the entire game. Don't have to do anything else. I'm like, okay, I will take your statement at face value. And I got murked by the rats in the dungeon. And I looked at my friend, just like, you fucking lied to me. I'm not playing this game anymore. And that's a very dumb reason for me not to continue to play it. But it's nah. it's been a long time. Uh... Anyway, 